John Quincy Marr has the unfortunate distinction of being the first Confederate officer killed in the American Civil War. Uh, he was killed at Fairfax Courthouse uh, on June the 1st, 1861, which is about seven weeks before the battle at First Manassas. Marr was from Fauquier County, where he grew up. Uh, he attended the Virginia Military Institute, graduated second in the class of 1846. Uh, where he also served as the top-ranking cadet officer or the first captain. Uh, but he also was an instructor uh, immediately after, uh, during the time when he was seeking a commission in the U.S. Army. Uh, but he did not go into the U.S. Army, uh, did not receive a commission, uh, lamented this fact to some degree before deciding to go back home where he worked on the family farm. Uh, and in Warrington, he actually practiced law uh, either as justice of the peace or even as the sheriff for a little while. This is uh, holding to the ideal that most uh, VMI graduates today refer to as being a citizen soldier. Uh, after John Brown's raid in October 1859, a number of folks went out to set up their little militia unit here or there in response. And John Quincy Marr uh, seems to be that person uh, for Warrenton. He uh, organized a company of men uh, and they called themselves the Warrenton Rifles and he was elected the captain to command that company. Uh, and eventually in 1861 uh, as the regiments were being formed uh, the Warrenton Rifles became uh, Company K of the 17th Virginia. John Quincy Marr was a member of Virginia's Secession Convention uh, representing Fauquier County. Uh, and as that debate raged, we know through history for Virginia that on its first vote, it was cast on April the 4th, uh, Virginia, uh, as it turns out, voted against secession. And then later uh, on uh, April the 17th, voted in favor of secession, which is the one that we think of today. Uh, John Quincy Marr seems to have followed that same course. Uh, he voted against session on April the 4th, was away on business back in Warrenton uh, for the second vote, but lent his support to the provisions that passed. Uh, on June 1st, 1861, Captain Marr uh, and his company of men were uh, at Fairfax Courthouse. It was very early morning hours, uh, a small skirmish between that unit and the U.S. Cavalry uh, erupted and in that first wave um, we find that Captain Marr was shot uh, through the heart uh, with a single round, we're small caliber, we're not exactly sure whether it came from the U.S. Cavalry or whether it would have been uh, perhaps a friendly fire incident. But uh, whatever the case may be, uh, he was one of the first ones killed. Uh, the unit that he had raised and trained uh, acquitted themselves like veterans, uh, according to Colonel uh, Richard Ewell, who eventually became a general. Um, he was uh, heaped a lot of praise on Marr and his men for the way that they acted in that small skirmish. Uh, and unfortunately for Marr, he didn't live to, to see that uh, nice report written about, about his troops. Uh, the Museum of the Confederacy does have a number of pieces that are related to John Quincy Moore, uh, a lot of his personal effects. We do have a number of nice things such as his dress sword that was given to him as a gift by the Virginia Military Institute. We actually have uh, a commission as a lieutenant colonel that was offered to him by Governor Letcher. Uh, we have uh, some dress epaulets and a nice shako that uh, has a, features a WR for warrant and rifles right in the middle of it. Uh, but probably the most significant uh, items that we have are the uniform that he was wearing when he was killed. Uh, there's a shell jacket with a single uh, bullet hole in it directly over the heart. And we also have an overcoat that he was wearing at the time as well, uh, which bears the fatal shot. If you are looking at the uniform uh, today, uh, you will notice that the there is no blemish or stain on the cape for the overcoat. Uh, but if you peel back the uh, cape, you will notice the pistol shot and blood stains uh, right over the heart area in the overcoat. 
So the curiosity is whether or not he had detached the cape for the morning or whether he was wearing it flared over his shoulders, which is what he would have done when he was a cadet. The thing that resonates about the life and early death of John Quincy Moore uh, is that he was a citizen soldier, uh, that he came out of his community to fight in this war, uh, to lead troops in a cause that he supported, uh, and then was cut down very quickly. If you're interested in John Quincy Moore, uh, I invite you to come to the Museum of the Confederacy where you can see a number of the pieces that I've talked about that certainly speak to the common soldier uh, or even the young officer who left his personal life to go off and on this campaign, which turned out to be a four-year war.